17 is a phenomenal age. For starters, you're young, you're invincible, and perhaps most excitingly, you get your driver's license. Now I love my parents, big fan, but I'd be lying if I said when I got my driver's license at 17 that I wasn't itching to get out of the house, leave my parents at home, and drive away into the sunset without a care in the world. 17 meant that now I could play the car radio as loud as I wanted, as much as my parents hated it, and it was totally worth it, even if it meant I inevitably blew out the car speakers of my new Honda Civic. Well, when I was cruising along through life at 17, waiting anxiously to hear back from Duke University, my top choice, of course, I fell flat on my face, literally. On November 23rd, 2021, just past midnight, I collapsed face down. My mother, not knowing what happened, just hearing a loud thump rushed to my aid to see her youngest son, unresponsive, violently and vigorously convulsing. My older brother soon emerged from the rooms and watched as paramedics lifted my lifeless body down the stairs. Epilepsy, a high-impact diagnosis for incurable condition that those around me, most of all myself, thought was a life sentence to misery, instability, and total hopelessness. Weeks later, the head of one of the world's largest epilepsy centers sat me down and said, Rowan, you will never be a great athlete or student ever again. Confirming that my condition would functionally end my life, or at least the life I'd always envisioned for myself. So, I have epilepsy. Now what? For starters, individuals with epilepsy have a significant lower seizure threshold than others. Treatment not only includes medication, but also significant lifestyle changes, i.e., this means New York State DMV saying, psych, we're going to take away your driver's license, Rowan, immediately after I passed my road test. But what did epilepsy specifically look like for me? It meant for months, I would wake up and after one or two steps, would collapse. After several tests, we now know that I was suffering from myoclonic seizures. Now, seizures can be such a scary word. These are really just convulsions caused by abnormal and excessive neuronal activity. Like myself, my brain just gets a little too excited sometimes. Naively, I didn't realize this was a problem until it was too late. One moment, I was having a conversation with my father. The next, I wake up in the back of an ambulance. Not sure how I got there, how long it had been, barely recognizing my loved ones behind me. But it was because of this this instability that I also further realized the worst part of my epilepsy wasn't the fact that I was having these seizures. It was the fact that I didn't know when I was gonna have them. The worst part about my epilepsy is that I don't get auras or any indication that I'm about to have a seizure. I don't get that moment where my body says, Rowan, pull over. Rowan, take a seat so that you can have a seizure in a safe place. I don't and will never get that peace of mind. I remember the first time I got sick after getting diagnosed. For reference, something as simple as a common cold can be enough to trigger seizure with someone with epilepsy. I was in physics class senior year, my hands couldn't stop shaking. I remember being paralyzed with fear in that moment, not only for myself, but because I now felt like a liability. I hated the thought of having to subject my innocent classmates to something as heinous and traumatizing as watching me have a seizure. It felt selfish. And so, as a 17-year-old would do, I called my mom had her pick me up from school. And I remember in that moment too, having to shield the absolute fear I was feeling as to not burden her with my emotions. I got home, trekked up the stairs vigorously and slammed my door and bawled my eyes out. Remember my emotions kept on building and building and building until suddenly I felt I was seconds away from taking my last breath. I was too young to die, but I found myself saying my goodbyes at 17 preparing to seize at any moment, thinking maybe just this one time, I won't be lucky enough to wake up. It was in that moment that I realized the fear and anxiety of having a seizure was far worse than the seizure itself. The following weeks were hard. The cloak of invincibility I once wore as a teen was now shattered, and the tremendous discomfort, instability, and burden on others I now felt was suffocating. But today, I'm here to talk about what that adversity, what that emotional turbulence produced. What I accomplished not despite my disability, but because of it. And I'll say that one more time because the language here is so important. What I accomplished not despite my disability, but because of it. So, what have I done? 
On July 24th this past summer, I became one of the first epileptics to finish an Ironman triathlon, swimming 2.4 miles, biking over 112, before running an entire marathon. I did so in pursuit to show that someone with epilepsy could accomplish and finish a race that many deem as one of the most grueling races in sport. That wasn't enough. And so three weeks later, I went one step further. I set the official world record of anyone, epileptic or not, of any age, for most sprint distance triathlons completed in 24 hours, this time running over 45 miles before biking 108 to accomplish the feat. What I've learned now is that epilepsy has opened my eyes to the most amazing accomplishments I can pursue, and has uniquely shown that the things I used to think were out of the realm of possibility, suddenly now being within its arm reach because of my disability, because of my diagnosis. And so today, I want to talk about three things. First, how navigating the mental health challenges that epilepsy threw my way forced me to nourish and grow my resilience, allowing me to accomplish such physical feats that I never otherwise would have before. Second, how getting diagnosed with epilepsy unequivocally made me the best version of me. And finally, how you can approach adversity in such a manner that it propels you forward rather than pulls you back. Now, I'd be lying if I took this opportunity on stage and told you, hey, from the moment I got diagnosed, I knew I'd do an Ironman. I knew I'd set a world record, or frankly, that I'd be able to see epilepsy as anything other than a diabolical disgrace to which I was unfairly given. That simply would not be true. When I was first diagnosed, I cried. I cried a lot. Frankly, not only was I sad, I was lost. I was drowning in emotions I'd never once in my life ever felt or even knew existed. I was unhealthily consumed by irrational questions that no teenager should be considering. How do I live a meaningful life that may end tomorrow? How can I be hopeful for the future when so much is uncertain? How can I love myself? It's a burden for others to love me. It's navigating these difficult questions when I realized that it wasn't just this, but I had all of society saying, Rowan, you can't do this. Rowan, you can't do that. I have close ones saying, Rowan, you can't be alone anymore. Rowan, you can't be an athlete anymore. I had EMTs and paramedics that I looked up to for my entire life telling my 17-year-old self, Rowan, you can never pursue a career in the medical field ever again. You can never be who Rowan was anymore. Good. Because when I set out to set a world record, and at hour 17, with my legs soiled and blood vessels soiled in lactic acid, felt as if I couldn't go one step more, and the motivational speeches of Les Brown and David Goggins that were once ringing in my ears that used to provide euphoric motivation now suddenly felt numb, I took one more step, and thousands more when it seemed humanly and physically impossible, because they said I couldn't. Because I wanted to show fellow epileptics that this, this, was possible. I wanted to show because we as epileptics were told to stop living our life to the fullest. And that when I was first diagnosed and desiring more hope in my life, I was begging for a story like mine today to cling on to with just an ounce of motivation that a life of substance and fulfillment was possible with epilepsy. More than anything, I took that one more step because they told me to stop. In the absence of adversity, I never would have done an Ironman or set a world record. I'm not particularly talented. I was running twice as much as the guy to my right. All I did was change the story. Turn hurdles, obstacles, and adversity meant to slow me down instead into the motivation that uniquely allowed to me to finish athletic feats that I never would have been able to before. And it's because of this that I stand up here and say, I'm not an Iron Man and a world rec holder despite my epilepsy. I'm all of these things and so much more because of it. And that's why it's important to note that when you find yourself at the intersection of trials and tribulations, ask yourself, how can I use this for motivation to propel me forward rather than anchor me down? That being said, epilepsy has made me so much more than an endurance athlete with just a little extra motivation in the tank. Now, the pitfalls that I once felt consumed by after my diagnosis contribute to the characteristics that I love most about myself. Research from the nation's leading thinkers on the science of happiness tell us the gratitude acceptance, love, are the most important characteristics to living a happy and fulfilled life. Before I was diagnosed, I questioned how many of these traits and characteristics I truly emulated. 
I was an overly ambitious high school student who prioritized academic and extracurricular success over all else, which only would have put me down a long path of overworking myself to the point where I was probably unhappy and burnt out. Through that lens, epilepsy grounded me. Epilepsy first strengthened my relationships. It was devastating losing my driver's license at 17, but doing so opened my eyes to the strong support system I had around me all this time, but that I had neglected to appreciate. I realized I had family and friends who were able to step up when I needed transportation. And frankly, I learned how fun it was to be a passenger princess and my loving girlfriend drive me around all the time, where now my only concern was whether I should queue up Olivia Rodrigo or Taylor Swift. But relying on my loved ones out of necessity during a time of my life allowed me to feel more loved and supported when I otherwise would have felt alone and isolated. And so for anyone who felt like they may have recently lost their independence, seize that as an opportunity to grow, appreciate, and build relationships, and appreciate love. Second, epilepsy exposed me to the mental health challenges that those around me were always going through. I never realized the magnitude that navigating mental health challenges could have on an individual until I found myself in that exact situation. So chances are, if you're feeling sad, someone around you is feeling the same way, if not worse. Help yourself, but help others. Text that friend that you love and appreciate them. Finally, epilepsy gave me much needed perspective. Happiness wasn't getting an A on my organic chemistry exam, nor was it being like a triathlon national champion. Happiness was helping others, loving myself, loving my family, thinking about a really hopeful future with a loving wife and a family of my own. Doing so and attaining such a perspective required meditation, it required a deep thought about my purpose in life and what I want to leave on this earth, all of which was uniquely prompted by my diagnosis. And it's because I've had all these positive experiences and tangible impacts that have sparked out of a diagnosis that I used to think could never do any good that I choose to celebrate my epilepsy now rather than hide it. That's why you see me crossing Ironman finish line, setting world records with the epilepsy logo tatted all over me to show that I want to celebrate my disability and not hide it. And so what's my message for you? Stop letting other people, plagued by ignorance and naiveness, write your life story. Because the way I see it, the only way to combat ignorance is through undeniable excellence. And that's why I continue to push the bounds for what society deems as possible for someone with epilepsy. And so push back. Be skeptical. When you receive bad news, find the light even in the darkest of bad news. If you receive bad news, why is this bad? How can I grow, overcome, and nourish my personal growth as a result of overcoming said adversity? Embrace adversity. When I stop seeing epilepsy as an anchor to my goals rather than as a super boost for my personal growth and development, that is when I started to accomplish because of my epilepsy. That's when I started to accomplish goals I never thought were possible that now were suddenly possible because of my disability. That's when epilepsy equipped me and transformed me into an unstoppable machine capable of my most ambitious pursuits. I changed my story, and so can you. Embrace that adversity. Understand that that adversity will allow you to take one more step because that obstacle is going to give you a newfound perspective that you were in dire need of all these years. Because that bad news wasn't actually bad news. It just shed light on your new future that's unpaved, waiting to be claimed. Seize it. Thank you.